represent the fact that you're grieving. They represent your heart. So we're going to, in a second, pair them together. After I say a prayer, I'll say it in Hebrew and in English, and you'll say Amin. Okay, my terrible. phone is going to help us by removing their camera device. As long as it means forget, as long as it means forget. Okay, we're going to leave it at three, two, one. We're going to the black roller in the center of the lower device. Okay, you're going to And friends, again, at this time, we are going to begin services. Officiating today will be Rabbi Wendy Geffen from North Shore Congregation Israel. Thanks, Jack. Each of us has a name. Each of us has a name given by God and given by our parents. Each of us has a name given by our stature and our smile and given by what we wear. Each of us has a name given by the mountains and given by our walls. Each of us has a name given by the stars and given by our neighbors. Each of us has a name given by our longing and given by our love. Each of us has a name given by our celebrations and given by our struggles. Each of us has a name given by the seasons and given by our blindness. Each of us has a name given by the sea and given by our death. Death has taken our beloved Florence as we grieve. We pray that her family, her loved ones, her friends find comfort and consolation from community and of course from each other. For Florence's love that united us in life and which death could never sever for her companionship that we shared along the path of life and which continues now through the tenderness of memory, for the gifts of her heart and mind that brought joy and happiness and are now precious remembrances. For all these and more, we give our thanks to God. And so it is that we turn to voices, both ancient and new, to guide us, as we journey through the valley of the shadow of death together. Adonai ro'i lo echsar, bino deshe yar bitseni ame menuchot yinahaleni nafshi yisho vev, yancheni bama'ag le tzedek lema'an shemo. These Hebrew words are the words of the 23rd Psalm, a source of comfort to so many throughout the ages. You have a translation of those words written in the pamphlet you received just a few moments ago. If you're here with us and if you're joining us on the internet, you likely know these words as well. We'll join together in one voice in order to show Florence's family that we are here, that they are surrounded by community. We've learned over these past 19 months that the ability to hear others' voices, to be surrounded by the people who love us is not something to take for granted. So the power of being able to hear many voices joined at once, not solely through a screen, but actually in a way that we can hear and feel it in person becomes a solace giving gift that truly is priceless. Let's join together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. 
He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Birth is a beginning, and death a destination, but life is a journey. From childhood to maturity and youth to age, from innocence to awareness and ignorance to knowing, from foolishness to discretion and then perhaps to wisdom, from weakness to strength or strength to weakness and often back again, from health to sickness and back we pray to health again, from offense to forgiveness, from loneliness to love, from joy to gratitude, from pain to compassion, and grief to understanding, from fear to faith, from defeat to defeat to defeat until looking backward or ahead, we see that victory lies not at some high place along the way, but simply in having made the journey stage by stage, a sacred pilgrimage. Birth is a beginning and death a destination, but life is a journey, a sacred pilgrimage made stage by stage to life everlasting. Each lifetime is the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle, teaches Rabbi Lawrence Kushner. For some, there are more pieces for others, the puzzle is more difficult to assemble. Some people seem to be born with nearly a completed puzzle. And so it goes. Souls going this way and that, trying to assemble the myriad parts. But know this, no one has within themselves all the pieces to their puzzle. Everyone carries with them at least one and probably many pieces to someone else's puzzle. Sometimes they know it, sometimes they don't. But when you present your piece to another, whether you know it, whether they know it, you become a messenger from God Most High. We are here today, united, near and far, in memory of Florence. Flo, Flory, Mom, Grandma, Grandma Florence, Grandma Phonuts, Aunt Flory, Ladybug, and the list goes on. Florence Goodman was a person who lived a notably full and beautiful life. In truth, there would be no way to cover the entirety of her life in the time we have together this morning. That's certainly not the goal. But we will try to offer remembrance and reflection to give us a picture of the person she was, and more importantly, how she will be remembered in the lives of those who were most dear to her and to whom she was most dear in return. Florence was born to her parents, Regina and David, on May 11, 1929, in Chicago, followed a year later by the birth of Howard, and six years or so later than that, after that by Shelley. There was a question, Shelley, was it six, seven years? You're here, so you can attest to it. Six. six. <laughs> Raised on the south side, ultimately, Florence was loved by her parents. She was their princess something that was clear as Howard and Shelley had to work in the family butcher shop, but Florence never did. Florence also had meaningful relationships with her brothers. She was particularly close with Howard as they were so close in age, they were partners in crime, really shared their growing up journeys together. 
And Florence loved Shelley. As the baby, everyone loved Shelley. Florence was intelligent and very social. She always had many friends. She attended Hyde Park High School and went on to the University of Illinois satellite campus in Galesburg for a year and a half. After that, moving home and working as a secretary. In her 20s, Florence was set up on a blind date with Jack Goodman by a cousin. Legend has it that Jack, many years older than Florence, pulled up to the apartment in a Cadillac, looked up the stairway to see Florence in the window, overwhelmed with excitement for what she was seeing. She jumped up and down, ooh, daddy, 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 <laughs> as she was so smitten with Jack from the first moment she saw him. The two dated on and off for many years. Finally, in his mid-30s, Jack was ready to settle down after receiving significant counsel from many family members and friends that he was a fool for not seeing the gift of Florence right in front of him all along. The couple married on June 29, 1958 at the Blackstone Hotel, a wedding that was put together in only six to eight weeks. They honeymooned at the Fountain Blue in Miami, with Marla coming along essentially right in time, as one might imagine that sort of thing to play out. The couple moved to Highland Park after Jack bought a new house and a development there. Friends lived up there already. Jack loved it. Florence, not so much. But Florence launched into homemakerhood with great enthusiasm, nevertheless. She loved this role. Every holiday was hosted by her. There was dinner and a jello on the table every night for dinner and nothing was ever a burden. Together, Florence and Jack shared 54 years of marriage, a traditional marriage with traditional roles, and that worked for them. So much of their life was built around the community they had at Ravinia Green. They had so many friends there, they enjoyed golfing and really loved the social structure it provided. Florence and Jack shared a lot of laughter. Sure, many of the jokes were at Florence's expense, but she never minded and she always laughed along. And Jack was always so proud to have Florence on his arm. He thought she was so beautiful, something in which Florence took great pride. Neither Jack nor Florence grew up with much by way of resources that were provided for them, but they made sure they provided Marla, Joan and Kiki a life of security with love and a larger sense of family connectedness too. Just as Regina had adored Florence with a deep passion, so was Florence fierce in defense of her girls, something that the three of them have inherited and feel with their own children. Florence had unique relationships with each of her daughters, but all three relationships were grounded in deep love. And the devotion Florence had for her girls was extended to each of their husbands as well, as in Florence's mind, Mike, David, and Mitchell could do no wrong either. The greatest blessings undoubtedly though in Florence's life were her eight grandchildren, Matthew, Noah, Sarah, Jacob, Hannah, Daniel, Alyssa, and Sydney. She exulted in her grandmother role. She doted upon her grandchildren. And of real note is that she got to know each of them, all of them, for who they were, who they are. And they felt and knew their grandmother, her devotion, her adoration for them. Their love filled her life and hers filled theirs. Something that she shared with Jack while he was alive and something that undoubtedly helped to sustain her after he was gone. When Jack died in 2012, Florence was devastated. The months leading up to his death were so difficult as Jack had been so sick. And with Jack being the one to take care of everything, Florence found herself unsettled. But she was strong. She found ways to keep busy. She spent time with friends. And most importantly, her girls, her anchors were here and were caring for her. And of course, immense gratitude also goes to Liz, whose love and optimism undoubtedly added unquantifiable value to Florence's life, in particular during this last year of COVID, as Liz's presence and care put Florence at ease. Liz made sure Florence was never alone.
Florence was a person who treasured family and extended family. She was a wonderful cousin and aunt. She was glue that kept family together. She cared about people, her family and her friends, of whom she was blessed with many cherished relationships that she cultivated over the course of her life. Florence possessed an incredible eye for style and beauty, and she was beautiful too. She took pride in her appearance through to the very end. She loved to laugh. She was sweet and she was easy. Florence was not a perfect person, no one is. And Judaism doesn't teach that we should aspire to a life of perfection. Instead, it teaches we should aspire to a life of wholeness. In her long and full life, Florence achieved this wholeness, something that, we, that might serve for us as a living and enduring legacy, God willing, in the lives of those she loved whom she now leaves behind. I have a few remembrances from family members to share before we'll hear a few words from a few people who are here today. So first is from Florence's brother, Howard. My sister and I have shared so many fond memories together over the years. Since we were only 13 months apart, we were known as the Irish twins. We had many good times together with family outings on Sundays at Jackson Park at the Lagoon behind the Museum of Science and Industry, formerly known as the Ro Rosenwald Museum. I remember the games we would play running around the dining room table trying to catch each other. Needless to say, growing up together was a lot of fun, including when our younger brother Shelley arrived six, he says six or seven, but now we know it's six, so six years later. We had a lot of fun taking care of him. As we grew older, we would protect each other from anything or person who might hurt us on the playground. As adults, we would have birthday and holiday celebrations at each other's homes. And I remember the special on the menu was always Flory's famous jello molds. One of my fondest memories to this day is when my sister was very young, she gave me the nickname of Buddy. I do not know why or the origin, but it stuck with me through my young years as I grew up. When my friends were around, they, they were totally confused as to who is Buddy, as they knew me as Howard. And when my cousins were around, they only knew me as Buddy and not Howard. It took a long while for this to change. As an anecdote to this, like mother to daughter, my niece Marla knew that my middle name is Herbert, so she decided to give me the nickname of Howie Herbie. Thank you, Marla. In closing, I would like to say to my dear sister Florence, rest well, you are finally at peace. I love you, Howard. And this second offering is from Howard's daughter, Janny. I am very saddened by the loss of my Aunt Flory. Here are a few of my childhood memories of her. She was always so stylish, a fabulous cook, especially known for her amazing Jello recipes. <laughs> and she never missed a birthday or special occasion marked by a generous gift. I knew that my Aunt Flory cared about me and I had so much fun at her house hanging out with my three cousins. She always made a spot at the table for the fourth girl in the gang. In more recent times, she was so proud of the accomplishments of my children, David and Julie. Only a few weeks ago, I was lucky enough to spend time with Aunt Flory at a family dinner, and she absolutely loved seeing the photos of my new grandbabies, her great, great niece and nephew. Oh, how she would have loved them both. Aunt Flory, you will be greatly missed. I send my cousins, Marla, Joan, Kiki, and their families my deepest condolences, and please know I'm here with you today in heart spirit and love. So we'll hear now from Joan. No, that's okay. good. <laughs> 
for you. That's okay. Okay. My mom was a beautiful and elegant woman. She was always fashionably dressed and yet had a style all her own. She was very social and always surrounded by friends. <laughs> she loved to get dressed up and go out with my dad as they were always making new friends and growing their circle. But first and foremost, she was a mom. It could not have been more perfect that such a girl's girl gave birth to three daughters. She loved girl talk and definitely liked to dish. She was the perfect consultant. If you needed to know what to wear, how to shop a sale, what to cook and how to entertain. She loved that. She loved that the three of us were loud and funny and silly, although she herself was none of those things. She did not take things too seriously when it came to her three daughters. I got the impression that she was amused by us and surprised that the three of us could be hers. Her hands-off attitude set the stage for a lot of commotion between us, not only when we were young, but as we grew up. She may not have always known what to do with us to settle things down, but looking back on it, I think that she just found it interesting and somewhat entertaining. <laughs> She loved her family fiercely. This was not limited to the five of us. She considered our aunts, uncles, and cousins a part of the group always. We grew up with the connectedness to our extended family that is such a gift and continues to this day. I completely credit my mom with this. My mom was very humble and modest about any and all of her accomplishments in life, except when it came to her children, their spouses, and her grandchildren. She thought all of us were great, but even then took no credit for any of that. My mother loved her grandchildren more than anything in the world and delighted in their every move. They could do no wrong and were all perfect in her eyes. She was the quintessential grandma and the kids all felt her unequivocal acceptance and love. My, my mom was a role model for me in the most subtle yet important ways. She set a standard for loving and tolerance that was constant. She was quick to forgive and made me feel that a mother is the most reliable constant in a person's life. She lived an unflappable commitment to my dad and her family. I know I will continue to learn from my memories of her and how she lived. I love you, Mom, and will miss you always. Thank you. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Sarah, Hannah, and Sydney. Thank you all for coming here today to honor our grandma. We would like to share you a love letter that we have written for her. Dear Grandma, you were truly one of a kind. Caring, loving, giving, and fashionable. <laughs> for my entire life, I can remember you showing up at all the important things. Dance recitals, grandparents' day at school, birthday parties. You always left your mark in red lipstick on my cheek. <laughs> I remember one time when I was homesick from school and you showed up with my favorite snacks and stuffed animals. You always made it clear how much you loved us. All the trips to Florida where we would beg to stay with you and Poppy, even if it meant we were sleeping on air mattresses in the living room. 
time with you was always special. I'm going to miss having meals at your dining room table and asking you for stories about our family. I'm going to miss watching movies with you and singing along together. I'm going to miss the endless desserts you offered even as I was walking out the door <laughs> and will think of you whenever I'm having a frozen Snickers bar or mini drumstick. I'm going to miss lunch with you at Max's slash Max and Benny's because it was always between those two. And I'm going to miss kissing you on the cheek and telling you that I love you and you calling me Sarah Bear. I'm going to miss how sharp as a tack you were even in your later years. I feel so lucky to have been home for the past year to be at Sunday night dinners with you. Of course, the conversation would always end up on politics, and you and my mom would bond over that week's current topic. <laughs> you would recall specific facts about what was happening in our country, all the while wearing pink jeans and a matching sweater. <laughs> I hope to be that smart and well-dressed at your age. Grandma, you were gone too quickly, but you lived a long, happy life surrounded by Poppy, your friends, your brothers and their families, your daughters and son-in-laws, and eight, as you would say, delicious grandchildren who will always carry you with us. We love you, Grandma Florence. We love you. Okay. Um, Oi. There it goes. Only you could raise three of the strongest, brightest, most beautiful women because they are a product of you. you could not, we could not have been luckier to have had you. All eight of us sit here with our blankets made by you solely with love. You've provided something that each of us will cherish forever. You left your legacy of love and acceptance. You have instilled that we are all beautiful, successful, strong, and important in our own ways. You always made sure to reassure us of that, even if we didn't feel it ourselves. You were, we were all so incredibly lucky to have had the opportunity to have known you, to have loved you, and to have seen your strength firsthand. You have made an everlasting imprint with your love, and for that we couldn't thank you enough. We love you. Sometimes legacy is something we talk about in words, but we all just got to see that embodied, not just in words, but in three cousins standing next to one another, holding each other up all in memory and love of their grandmother. Is there anything more important and beautiful and precious than that? I don't think so. And in that way, Florence continues to bless us with her gifts. I'll invite you to please rise if you're seated. Elmale Rachamim, Shochein Bamromim, Hamatse Menuchan Echona Tachat Kanefe Hashchina, Im Kedoshimu Tahorim Kazora Harakia Mazhirim at Nishmat Freda Lea, but Yosel Dovid Verivka, Shelchale Olama. Baal harachamim, yaste reha beseter kena fechala olamim, vitsur bitsur haim nishmata, Adonai hu nachalata, Tanuach bishaloma mishkava venomar, Amen. Compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to Florence Migdal Goodman, who has entered eternity. O God of mercy, let her find refuge in the shadow of your wings and let her soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is her inheritance. May she always rest in peace. We say together, amen. You can be seated. Friends, at this time, the cemetery staff will come to lower the casket into the grave and lower the vault cover on top.
in just a moment, we'll join together in the words of Mourner's Kaddish, which you also have on the back of those pamphlets. Just a few words before that. This last period of time for Florence, as likely all of you know, was not easy. And yet her death was relatively unexpected. And so there is, there is some surprise and shock in this, even though Florence's life was long, but that's, that doesn't make it better. And we want to acknowledge that there, there is deep grief in that, but of some comfort is the fact uh, that in the end, Florence was surrounded by her daughters who really upheld the very best of the fifth commandment to honor their parents uh, through and through. Uh, and the, the navigation and the wrestling around advocating to get all of them there, in particular during these difficult COVID protocol days, uh, it takes incredible strength really to, to force one's way uh, through. And even in that, there is, there is a great testament to the legacy of strength in their family uh, and one that they embody because it's manifested and catalyzed through love. Uh, and although each of the girls shared their own relationship with their mom, they were fierce and united in her care, each taking on their own unique role in that, with pros and cons that might have come along with those specific positions. But at the end of the day, there was and will always remain love. And there's nothing more important than that which gives us a little bit of a framework for the Kaddish because when we say it as a community and when we say it personally, we say it in the context of grieving, but really it's a reminder to us to cultivate gratitude, to see the good, to choose to remember the good. And even in these last few, this shorter period of time where there was so much difficulty, there was also beauty and good and truthfully, throughout Florence's life, there was so much beauty and good. We don't and shouldn't remember people for their deaths. We should remember people for their lives. And Florence had a very colorful life. So think of her. Think of those experiences you had with her, the stories you've heard about her, that were most indicative of the truth of her life. I didn't know Florence, but I personally now picture her in a community-wide dressing room uh, at the stores where she worked, eyes precise to know what was right and what was wrong, ladies all around calling them out, yes, no, different size. <laughs> we miss those days. And the gift of a precise eye in Jewish tradition is a blessing from God. So think of Florence from her childhood, as she grew, her young adult years, as she navigated middle age, the roles she shared with you, bring them into yourself. Bring gratitude around that. That's why we say Kaddish. If you're able to rise, I'd invite you to do so and we'll join together in the words. If the words are familiar to you, you can join me in all of them. If they are not familiar, uh, we can just join together in saying Amen at the end. And our tradition credits you with having said the whole prayer. Let's join together. Yikadal v'yit kadash shemei rabba v'alma divera chirutei v'amlich malchutei v'chayechon v'yomechon v'chaye dachol beit Yisrael Ba'agalau vizman kariv imru amen. Yehe shame rabba mevarach le alam alme almaya. Vit barach, vit tabach, vit paar, vit romam vit nase. Vita dar, vita le, vita lal, shame de kudsha, brihu. La ela mean call birha tava shirata. Tush beha tava nechemata. Da amiran be alma vimru amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shemaya vechayim alenu ve'al kol Yisrael ve'imru amen. O se shalom bimromav hu ya'ase shalom alenu ve'al kol Yisrael ve'imru amen. 
Zichronali Vracha, may Florence's memory always be for a blessing. We say together, Amen. Friends, for those who would like, you're welcome to step forward after the family members to participate in the burial. This Jewish tradition is understood as one of the highest levels of acts of care uh, for someone we love, uh, as it's understood as an act of true selflessness uh, for which you cannot receive a thank you from the recipient. We are seeing Florence's body to its final resting place. And so the tradition is to place one to three measures of earth into the grave, then to place the scoop back down into the vessel so each person can fulfill this act entirely of their own accord. Of course, if you're not physically able, we'll be there to help. Friends, just a few announcements. You're all welcome to make your way up on either side to place earth in the grave if you wish. Uh, with regard to Shiva, the family wanted you to know they'll be together at the Joan and David Bergman residence. That's 77 Lakeview Terrace in Highland Park. That's today upon return from the cemetery. The Shiva will be outdoors. And just a reminder, if you are parking on Lakeview Terrace, please only park on the south side of the street. Additionally, memorial contributions the family has asked to go to Michael J. Fox Foundation. All of that information is available inside the folders that you received today. And for those of you who are joining us online, that information is also available on our website. 
Very shortly, we will be ending the live stream for those attendees who joined us today, and we thank you. One last note, if anyone has not had an opportunity to sign the register book, we do still have that out. It's just uh, in front of the hearse. If anyone would like to sign, please feel free to take a moment to do that now before we return it to the family. Thank you.